So guys, Barista DG has come out to speak on behalf of the protesters. He's one of the lawyers representing the protesters. Just take a look at what he said. No, talk, no negotiation with government at all. We don't even want to sit down with government. Today, if the president, who is the father of the nation, calls us and say, we want that, I have listened to your demands. After all, sovereignty belongs to the people from wherein the government derives all its powers, according to section 14 <coughs> of our constitution. And the president says, Oh, my citizens, I have decided to remove, to bring back fresh subsidy. Fuel will now be sold for 200. But there are no budgets for that again. But the, we, we could suddenly make budgets for the, pres, the new presidential jet. We could buy a, a ship. With all the expenditures that we've... Look at, they took how many people to Dubai for that conference. Do you know how much we spent? On there are that, those who said that happened were by government talks, you know, we've been warning over a week ago that government will try to quell the protests like we saw in Abuja today. And that people are too hungry that if they mobilize thugs, these thugs will not go home. This is not 2020 during NSAS when people were still not this hungry. We, we warned them over a week ago that they should not mobilize thugs. That if they mobilize thugs, the thugs will go against them. And this is what we saw or we have seen happening. Additionally, it's important to know that, in fact, many of the Pictures of looting that the police were referencing turned out to be old pictures that have been on the internet. And a first PRO in one of the northern states was seen spreading this fake news. Engagement. The only engagement you want is the president to take action. The president. You don't want no, to no, sit no. down with the president. We, we will engage the president when How? we know that. When we, we know that at least. That's, this is what the protesters are saying. Because I confer with them. I was conferring with them even on my way here. And I'll still begin to confer with them immediately. We've taken the offers for engagement, because government has continually uh, putting out the offer for engagement. <clears throat> However, the protesters are saying, before we go and meet the president, before we engage, even the FCT minister who was grandstanding the, the day before yesterday, is now saying that they want to engage the protesters. Before him and Asai Dokubo said, protests will never happen. So, cool. Hooray! So guys, the protest for yesterday was really a success because people like Wiki and even the CP in Abuja, they thought it was going to be a mere rhetoric. But guess what? They saw that Nigerians meant business. When we say people are hungry, we are not exaggerating. The hunger is there and people need to come out to register their dissatisfaction with, you know, the way things are going on in Nigeria. And that was exactly what happened yesterday across the nation. But guess what? These people even went ahead to hire talks, hire talks to it kind of to disrupt the protest, but it fired back at the government. I mean, those talks went ahead to start looting, looting. Honestly, Nigerians want peaceful protests. Also, like you've just heard, they just said this protest is going to continue until the demands are met. They want to see the demands being met, not by on the, not on the paper, but it should really be done, and then people will start seeing it. Then the protesters are going to clear off the streets. So, guys, I'm going to let you just take your time, listen to what Deji has got to say, and I must say a very big kudos to Deji. He's doing a good job. Yesterday, he stood firm, even in the midst of fierce, you know, resistance by the police CP. But he stood firm, and that protest held. It was a huge success in Abuja, and today the protest is going to continue. So, guys, watch out for more updates, you know, from today's protest. Let me allow you to take a look at what Deji said. Thank you. You don't want to take responsibility Thank for, you for, for what happened today. There's <laughs> nothing like taking responsibility. Mm. We'll, right. we'll gladly even participate in the tomorrow's protest. Uh, would you say the objective of your protest today has been achieved? Uh, uh, apparently, it has. Even before the protest started, the protest was already a success. Because the idea of protest is not just to hit the street. It's about agitation, you know, making demands. The demands are so popular. For instance, the issue of return of fair subsidy. Why are you giving governors all the money when you can you know, directly give the poor people and give the economy the money. After all, once the governors take the FAC, they actually share, take their, give a token to the local government and uh, overhead cost, and they almost instantly change the rest to dollars, dollars and stockpile it, which is unfortunate. The president thinks he's trying to save the nation by saving money. Even before the president started giving the governors triple of their monthly allocation, the governors were alleged of stealing money meant for their state. So why then give them more? Why then give them more of this money? So why, do, because the reason why there's hyperinflation in the country is because 
fuel directly affects... Sorry, uh, Comrade Adeonju, let me pause you for a moment. Let's listen to the IG. We go live now to the police headquarters where the Inspector General of Police, Kao De Egbertokun, is now briefing the nation. Thank you, Inspector General of Police. The Inspector General of Police, who's just been briefing uh, the nation about the situation across the country, has uh, told us about uh, the uh, attacks, the death of a police officer, the kind of casualty that we have seen on civilian population in some parts of the country. And he says that all units of the police have been placed on red alert and will move swiftly on that. The judge you were saying earlier, um, about you're talking about the objective, but from what you have seen and heard today from the IG, what's your immediate response to that? The, the IG's uh, press house was filled with threats to the Nigerian people. It's completely unacceptable. The IGP does not have the right to donate or withdraw the right to protest to Nigerians. Neither does he have the right to even set guidelines on how people should protest. We had made him know this in our interaction with him uh, a couple of days ago. It is also unfortunate that the IGP should be held responsible for all the violence that happened today in many parts of the country. I'll give you an instance and a simple example of the FCT. In the FCT, the people were hailing the military in Marabaya because they were extremely professional. But they were the ones that provoked the attack in Marabaya because they just unprovoked, they just started attacking peaceful protesters and shooting at them. So the people reacted by booing them and by running to save their lives. How is that an attack on the police? And I challenged the IGP to bring the details of the police officer that he claimed was killed in any part of this country today. That it is a big lie. No police officer was killed today. Today alone, the IGP and his men killed several protesters in Borno. They killed several unarmed protesters in Kaduna. They killed protesters in Suleja. These guys should start- these reports you are getting from your people on the ground? We, they are all in the news all on social media, no, video, are you getting videos and documentary evidence to back up all these claims some of, which, of people you know, that have died. And that's why we challenge the Inspector General of Police to provide the details and particulars of the, of the officer that he said died. Honorable, let me bring you into the conversation. What would be your immediate reaction to what the police of uh, the IG, IG has said? <clears throat> well, I can't act on what the IG have said. I'm a representative of the people. Uh, I just had his press conference and I say, Chief Law Officer, or if I may call it someone that should protect the life of the citizen of this country from being killed and ensuring that there is peaceful coexistence within the four angles of Nigeria, he reserved the constitutional right to tell Nigerians what he is doing. And as a representative of the people too, I think we can ask him what he is doing. So for him to say what he has said, I think uh, I cannot say whether he is right or wrong. Because you cannot just hear something today. I've seen all sorts of pictures in the social media. Yes, I've seen protectors be protesters with blood lying down uh, in form of a dead body. So I've seen that. I cannot claim that I have not seen people killed. I've equally seen a picture of a police officer that is claimed to have been killed. I've seen it in the social media. But to say anything about the statement right. of the Inspector General of Police, I think I'm incapacitated at this moment. All right until I make due Just, diligence. Uh, apologies, I need to pause you gentlemen for a moment because we're still keeping our eyes on the IGP is receiving questions from journalists. Well, we'll go on a break and when we come back, more from my guest. In the face of the interim order that has been flying around, I was served a copy of the court order at the venue of the protest by the FCT police commissioner. I've looked at the order the face of the order. The order did not restrict Nigerians from protesting in any part of Abuja. There are defendants that are named on the face of the order. If they have served those defendants, good luck <coughs> with the police. The idea of inserting persons unnamed goes to no issue because we've done a proper review of the order. Nigerians are known people. If you want the order to apply to Nigerians, they know what to do. You have to, you, someone who is not named in a, in, a, in a suit cannot be directly affected by the suit or the positive order of the court. And in fact, with all the issues around the interim order, we still advise protesters to stay at the National Stadium. The CPFCT uh, command was trying to force protesters into the 
stadium. And we said, we are not here to play a football match. We don't have to go to the turf to play football. We are at the national stadium. And protesters were apprehended, apprehensive that they wanted to lock them inside the, the national stadium. And while the CP was insisting on that, we saw security vans. They drove eight, six buses, six luxurious buses with thugs at the national stadium. That was what necessary. And the whole media, everybody was there. So this can be verified. But what do you, like, what that do was what uh, 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 the, the protesters What do you make of, of the fears of the government? The government yeah. had warned that this could escalate. Yes. And it could turn violent. Mm. And looting could happen. Mm. Exactly what they feared happened today. The lootings that happened were by government talks. You know, we've been warning over a week ago that government will try to quell the protests like we saw in Abuja today. And that people are too hungry that if they mobilize thugs, these thugs will not go home. This is not 2020 during NSAS when people were still not this hungry. We, we warned them over a week ago that they should not mobilize thugs. That if they mobilize thugs, the thugs will go against them. And this is what we saw or we have seen happening. Additionally, it's important to know that, in fact, many of the pictures of looting that the police were referencing turned out to be old pictures that have been on the internet. And a first PR in one of the northern states was seen spreading this fake news. So before they build up to the protests yesterday, the government people were circulating a fake press release by the take it back to having called off the protest. So all ideas about propaganda has failed in this protest. And it is still going to fail. Government should, while we sympathize with government, especially the federal government, because it appears that all attention is about the federal government and we are overlooking the states. The states last month got 1.3 trillion from federal government allocation. Then they got an additional 433, 38 billion from the COVID fund uh, funds. What have they done with it? These states, they loot the treasury. They are not accountable. So Nigerians should also make specific demands on the protest, <coughs> on, the protest uh, on the politicians. Additionally, sir, it is important to state that whether anybody likes it or not, the protesters have de <coughs> defined demands. If the president begins to meet some of the demands today, in fact, we had said that- What we, are these we, demands? Yes, issue of returning for a subsidy. It is better to subsidize for the Nigerian people than to be subsidizing for politicians. We are subsidizing for the governors. <coughs> it is not a sustainable approach to governance. If you subsidize, and every nation in the world does subsidy of some kind, even the developed nations, so if we subsidize fuel, it directly affects almost everything that has to do with our economy. We are also saying that politicians should not be paid wages. It should be a part-time job. Which of, the, which of them? The National Assembly? All. All, uh, with no exception. Including the ones including, in the executive. Including the ones in the executive. Nigeria is too broke for the principal <laughs> members of the National Assembly to be having thousands of aids. Nigeria is too broke. Nigeria is too broke for ministers to be having hundreds of aids. As the parastatals are having hundreds of AIDS, Nigeria is too broke for that. That the idea behind this protest is that we have a fundamental problem. We can't just keep blaming the president, the president, the president. When, the, when this president came, he said he, he wants Nigerians to make sacrifices. <coughs> Nigerians started making sacrifices from day one of this government. They were paying 167 naira. They started paying almost 700 naira per liter of oil. Have Nigerians not sacrificed enough in the last one year? Look at the hyperinflation. The sacrifice of Nigeria, Nigerians are even affecting the economy. It is time for the politicians to also make sacrifices. Another demand of the protesters is the issue of insecurity. We, I didn't know that the police can suddenly be on red alert over protest. But there's no red alert about the insecurity problems in the country. So it means it, it is intentional. They don't want the insecurity in the country to, to stop. It's, it's some form of business. You need to see the grandstanding and the brother, despite all our efforts to work with the police today, all across the country. <coughs> I can speak specifically for the FCT. We made concerted efforts to make sure that the, the protests did not degenerate in every part of the FCT. But the police, it's like they had an order from the Inspector General of Police that at some point, it was peaceful until we got to the 3 armed area. They fired more than 500 tear gas canister. If they even ran out of tear gas. Were you point, there? I was there live. So Nigerians <clears throat> are, were there. People made videos for the inspector of police who have 
I do not have any problem with him, for him to come on live TV and say that it was the protesters that attacked the police. Before wow. I allow you to go, Ebon Aulu Adeborua has advised the protesters that he should reduce the protest to just today. Yes. I, where the protesters yield to that call? Ebon Aulu Adeborua is very well respected, respected by many stakeholders, you know, that are offering services to uh, the protesters. But I'm one of the lawyers representing the protesters. If, do I have the right to advise the protesters that they should reduce protest to But will year. you be going to the street tomorrow? Yes, of course, because the idea is to ensure that the rights of Nigerians are not violated. And what, I mean, people are asking for engagement. I mean, if you- We are not advanced for see, engagement. How do you want to add, make this happen? You see, that was the main, one of the mistakes we made during NSAS. No talk, no negotiation with government at all. We don't even want to sit down with government. Today, if the president, who is the father of the nation, calls us and say, we want that I have listened to your demands. After all, sovereignty belongs to the people from wherein the government derives all its powers, according to section 14 <coughs> of our constitution. And the president says, oh, my citizens, I have decided to remove, to bring back fresh subsidy. Fuel will now be sold for 200. But there are no budgets for that again. But the, we, we could suddenly make budgets for the, pres, the new presidential jet. We could buy a, a ship. We all the expenditures that we've, look at, they took how many people to Dubai for that conference? Do you know how much we spent? On there are that? those who say so, that there's been an evil about the subsidy for years. How yes. do you want to bring back that evil? It's servicing just a few instead of the, the, the majority of Nigerians. It, it services benefit. our economy. Why is the president servicing the governors? Why is the president taking all the resources of the country and giving it to the governors? See, we sympathize with the president. If the president offers genuine solutions mm. and takes specific steps to meet some of the demands of the protesters. Believe me, this time will be different mm. from the answers when we have a zero policy and say, we will not even listen to government. So you don't want any engagement. The only engagement you want is the president to take action. The president- You don't want no, to no, sit no. down with the president. We, we will engage the president when How? we know that, when we, we know that at least, that's, this is what the protesters are saying. Because I confer with them, I was conferring with them even on my way here. And I'll still begin to confer with them immediately. We've taken the offers for engagement because government has continually uh, put out the offer for engagement. <clears throat> However, the protesters are saying, before we go and meet the president, before we engage, even the FGT minister who was grandstanding the, the day before yesterday, is now saying that they want to engage the protesters. Before him and Asai Dokubo said, protests will never happen. So the idea is, before we go for any engagement, let's have specifics. The, as a responsible government, these are the steps we are willing to take. Protesters will say, yeah, and believe me, in all of this, the government should be most worried about the unannounced protest, which is inevitable with the way the country is being run. Thank God that these protests have a date. It has timelines, it has demands. That's why the IG is still issuing threats on national TV. Let us be more worried for the unannounced protests that will not have date and that will not have time. Finally, before I allow you to, because I know that you said you want to run. Now, uh, the big question is that orders have been given, don't move beyond it. Are you worried about the flouting of those orders? As a lawyer, I am, as a lawyer. Because it is our duty to advise the protesters. But you know that the constitution is explicit. It said sovereignty belongs to the people. I know the voice of the people is the voice of God. The government exists because of the people. It's very simple. There's, the, the Court of Appeal has ruled in the AMPP case, which Leonard Senior Femi Falana litigated for the then AMPP, Buhari and others that were tear gassed in Kano, that you cannot restrict protesters <coughs> to a specific place. So while I, I am advising the protesters to take steps like they did today, you know, all they need to show is that they have, they've, ta they've taken steps mm. to comply with the order by being at the Moshul Abiola. The government brought thugs, and government forced them out of the place. So their further actions can be explained within the context of the rule of law. So you and your friends, as you advise, they will be going out tomorrow. Yes. And uh, you want government to take action. Those are your plans. We, we, we are looking forward to working with the police and other security agencies to make the protests as peaceful as possible all across the country. All right. Ejiade Anju is a lawyer and uh, is uh, a convener of the Concerned Nigerians and is also one of those who are legally advising uh, the 
Protester, thanks so much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. <laughs>